Brethren of God, a star shone. It was the flame of the Holy Ghost. A flower breathed forth its fragrance into space. It was the flame of the Holy Ghost. The light of joy was in the eye of a child. It was the flame of the Holy Ghost. The world turned in space. The motivating power was the flame of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, gentle yet powerful, all-knowing, everywhere present manifestation of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I am the representative of the Holy Spirit and I come to you today that you may develop within yourself an appreciation of the nature of the infinite by which all things were made and by which life is sustained and by which life is magnified into the beauty coalesced radiance of the sacred fire blazing around a central zone is always a focalization of God's energy. And whether this be a minute manifestation or a greater one, whether it be a tiny electron or a blazing sun, whether it be the force field of a newborn child, a babe basking in its mother's love, or it be the radiant fires of a Buddha, an avatar, a descending one, it is still a manifestation of God and the dignity of his radiance manifests everywhere. 
Let all understand then that man is not bereft of hope, but living in a vortex of infinite hope. Let men understand that the Holy Spirit is the great uniter with reality by which the energies of ascendant man are united with the energies of God and the purposes of God. The purposes and motives of men are not the purposes and motives of God. They are a lesser manifestation emerging from the cocoon of ignorance and centered around desire, whereas the radiant purposes of God are the infusion of the sacred fire, a message of emancipation where man is cut free from desire until the only desire of his heart is the all-consuming love of the infinite spirit of the eternal one. And this is the great acceptable message of cosmic ecumenism. For man, to uniting with God, is also united with all of like mind. But those who are joined only in the subtleties of human experience often fall far short of the mark of reality. And we come to you then today with a message of cosmic purity and inspiration based upon the fires of Whitsuntide, a renewal of the Pentecostal experience where the beating power of the Holy Spirit radiantly descends upon the hearts of men and makes them aware of the power of the sacred dove, that in the rushing of the wings of the dove there is heard the sound of the mighty rushing wind, that the spirit of divine union, uniting men's hearts together, will teach them the way of the Christ, of the discovery of the mysteries of being within themselves. Oh, so sacred is this, this ever new moment of rekindling, this ever new moment of the second birth, this ever new moment of reality unfolding vistas of hope, leaving behind all despair and confusion, leaving behind all doubts and chaos, and perceiving the star of the crystals of each individual monad until that monad in the most blessed and divine sense comes to the fullness of the realization of the love of God for the unfolding soul. Then there is born within no sense of vain separation no sense of purposeless existence, but a sense of mission, of achievement, of accomplishment, of reality, of reunion, of proximity to the Father. Men then no longer feeling far away from the minions of heaven recognize that God to his various ministers of fire, his angelic beings, to the cosmic councils, the hierarchy, the avatars, and even the little child is always ready to exalt his presence within whosoever will acknowledge him, receive him, and understand that in the merging of the self with God there is no loss but only the gain of unique experience for each individual monad, whereby that monad, exalted in the strength of being, finds himself flushed with a sense of victory, even while in the heat of battle, and understands from the beginning that the beauty and perfectionment, the reality and the ascendancy of the light has always existed in the power and direction descending from on high in the Holy Spirit's 
blessed hands and anointing. Let men then forsake the darkness and inequity of human individual manifestation for the great unfoldment of the spiritual garment of solar reality, the garment spun from the flame of the sun by which when man is clothed, he becomes a son of God, an outpost of the Holy Spirit a living, pulsing, vital flame, able to assimilate reality wherever it is and to see wherever he is as a bastion of reality. He becomes then a city set upon a hill that can never be hid. And emanating from the mind of such a one is the flame of radiant cosmic intelligence, a design paper executed by the fingers of God, a blessed tome of instruction revealing to him the pathway universal, rising in spirals and cadences, spirals of light revealed to the sight, cadences of sound revealing the great stream of perfectionment that is light and sound, color, music, peace, all things which are longed for by the soul within. And then the din of the mortal world is stilled in the inner temple of being, and the communion of identity is a fait accompli, is a reality enfolding man as he soars in thought into the realm and domain of the spirit, free from the densities and opacities of outer consciousness. Aware of effluvic transmutation, he feels then the power of freedom as a soft garment of light surrounding his being and all that touches him and all that he touches of the light is always an exchange of a kiss of fiery peace. It is the kiss and anointing of God upon the sun. It is the receiving of the errant one. It is the receiving of the wanderer back to the heart of the Father. In this, there is no dismal dream, no accumulation of astral and psychic energies, but only the great power and principality of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the descending power to cut men free from all that is of mortal thought and a feeling of a carnal prison house of matter. Now the spirit acts, and because the spirit acts, the charmed radiance of the light surrounds the mortal form, and the mind itself is set free as an arrow to fly, not by the limitation of the bowstring of mortality, but by the power of the infinite bowstring the power of the infinite and the mark that will be made then upon the far-off worlds will be the mark of the child of light, the illumined one, the great rider upon the horse, the overcomer, the hero of cosmic joy who goes forth to receive the anointing and then, having received it, goes forth to serve in the many mansions of God, many devote themselves to the prison house of earth, to the realm of Terra, to assist the dense evolutions, the laggard civilizations, those bound round about by centuries of negativity to find their freedom at last from psychic density, from hatreds, from age-old 
thirst for vengeance from human struggle, from all that is of the outer world and mind, to receive then the power of the light, to perceive that glow of cosmic regeneration that lies ahead, to understand that the Holy Spirit is the guiding light of all who will receive him and revere him and revere the Father and revere the Son and open the door and understand that the heart is also sealed by the hardness of men's thoughts and the door must be opened and the Christ and the light and the Father, all one, must come in and sup with man and exalt man and raise him in hope and at last bestow upon him the crown of everlasting life. This is the gift of God to everyone. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power by which all outer conditions are overcome. It is the power by which men will win. Let men then, through the miracle of Whitsuntide, throwing their arms, their spiritual arms, upward toward God in hope, receive the reverential flow of the cosmic sound and the cosmic flow of the cosmic light into their world until brain and body and mind and soul are bathed with fingers of light and the sound and music of the voice of God calling each one home to receive their victorious crown. Let men see these goals always and never look or gaze upon that which is mirrored in outer world density. So shall they not lose sight ever of the goals the Holy Spirit sets before man that he may become an infinite integral part of the great cosmic plan, radiating from his heart those bands and bonds of cosmic love that are the sweet communion from above bestowing heaven's fires here below, burning all dense desires by their glow and feeding the soul with the sacred Eucharist the body of God, of Christ, of one who loves all, who is the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit, all these agreeing in one and functioning as one in creation, creating the bond of infinite freedom, light, immortality, and joy. My peace be upon you. May the peace of God be upon you. Our peace pours out into the world. Our peace floods the world. Our peace radiates everywhere. Our peace is a cosmic prayer for each monadic expression. I am the Mahachohan. I have spoken of his love. I speak of your love. You receive it. Live in it. Be that love in action.
Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost her savor, wherewith shall it be salted? The integrity of God, that is a rock, a pillar of strength in the world domain, is the most comforting aspect to humanity when viewed from the standpoint of the eternal. Grasped from the limited span of the finite life, it does not come clear. But when men proclaim their immortality, when they think in terms not of the passing sands of time, but in terms of universal accomplishment, the molding of the life pattern in accordance with the vision given in the Holy Mount of eternal identity, there is then created a vast change in perspective whereby the humanity of this world can understand the purposes that guided the lives of the saints and sages of old, that emanated as light substance from the ancient rishis, that went forth into the world order as the sanctity of divine ideas. We come then this day to commemorate Universal motherhood to commemorate the sanctity of the home, of the family, of the life patterns ordained by God for the productivity of the spiritual hierarchy, whereby the children of God in all generations could be separated from the children of mammon, those who elect to pursue the sensual and passing pleasures of the world are sorted out from those who elect to pursue the evolvement of the immortal breath of the sacred fire, the immortal soul within them, the great gift of God, the product of the Holy Spirit as the fusing action of the eternal Father, Mother, God that welded the drops of identity into the life pattern of each individual monad. The monad is the expression of the one. And when men express the complexities, the sordid complexities that are now being shown in this current age, I tell you, it is a travesty upon life itself and a disgrace to the wholeness of the universal mother. Yet the taint does not come nigh her immaculate concept. Nothing can alter the threads and patterns in their brilliance and their glowing fibers that manifest upon the great loom of cosmic life. For the wheel of the law inexorably turns and the spinning radiant thread of cosmic light substance that provides impetus and movement to every life upon this earth continues as the glowing fires of the immortal reality of God descend from on high into the chalice of each man's life for his use, whereby he may weave for good or for ill. Yet constructivism is our intent as it is the intent of God, a constructivism that becomes a builder of men, a builder of nations, a builder of humanities, the archetype of the world order, the fire of spiritual fervor descending into the chalice of life to create the God-victorious society and civilization 
from which golden ages are made. I am called the goddess of liberty, and this is because, as a cosmic mother, I espouse freedom for all the children of God of the Most High upon this planetary body. The words written as a tribute to me, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, is a fiat which I energize daily, desiring to receive the refuse of the world into the great melting pot of the victory of humanity. What then is a true American? A true American is not necessarily one who is born in what you call the United States, but one who embraces the supreme principles of liberty for himself, his family, his environment, his nation, and his world. For we do not elect to separate the family of nations and divide them. We elect to unite them under God and a sense of cosmic destiny whereby the power of constructivism is spread abroad throughout the world not as an attempt to control the destinies of men by small segments of humanity who elect to do it by political and devious means, but rather by drawing men closer and closer to the ideals of their divine and wonderfully radiant God presence to spread abroad the wings of faith whereupon the souls of men may rise, creating then patterns of glowing destiny like unto that which God himself used in the moment when he framed the worlds and created the heavens above. We say then to humanity below, let go of the patterns of density, the patterns of dust, the patterns of evil, the patterns of the human struggle, the patterns of the ego in its tiny moth-like circuit of the living flame, and replace it by the acceptance of your God-glorified cosmic ideals, whereby the integrity of the ascended master consciousness brings to the very feet of your God identity the great, beautiful jewel of cosmic truth. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life is the pattern of freedom, is the fiat of emancipation to a world in slavery. For the world is still in chains, even after all of its wars, all of its senseless struggles, all of its confusion and chaos, the world remains chained to base desire. The world remains chained to the ego, the world remains chained to identification with old and decadent habit patterns. And the power of the light and the power of the Holy Spirit is the power the Cosmic Mother would exert on behalf of each of her children who can accept the destiny of immortal life for themselves as a changing pattern in their world emanating from the changelessness of the beautiful faith of God which he released into their soul at that celestial moment of birth when the soul came forth from the cosmic matrix and standing there alone out of the cleft of the rock and seeing itself in its own beauty and glory declared, Lo, I am. For when the soul perceived itself mirrored in the creation and recognized the separateness of the monad and yet the ever-changeless cosmic identity 
of the monadic realities of the God ideal from which he framed and fashioned the soul, then you see there was delight within that self-aware identity of the living soul whom God created. This soul into which he breathed the breath of life was then given the fiat of dominion over the earth. And humanity chose, as Esau did of old, to take the pot of soup, the kettle of soup in preference to the immortal birthright. And they created a cocoon of ignorance and wound it as a binding shroud around themselves, which has necessitated the cycle of births and rebirths and the creation of wombs of darkness from which have emanated brothers of the shadow to spread abroad pain and deceit and anguish among the children of men and to perpetuate the veils of shadow and the negative aspects of creation. They have not knelt at the feet of their divine identity. They have not yielded themselves to the glory of their own I am God presence the great flame of living cosmic reality emanating from the cosmic mother, father, God. In its place, they have sought to create a Moloch of shame. And in their studies in darkness, they have evolved patterns of control based on ancient magic, ancient mantra, and those activities of darkness which are called by the wise the activities of the brothers of the shadow and the so-called black magicians of the world. These have sought to create enslavement of humanity. This enslavement in a spiritual way has caused them to create the matrices that read there is no God. These in the political way have created communal principles for the control of man under the dominion of a socialistic state. I want you then to know that I am upholding here the torch of freedom to the world. And as a cosmic mother, I ask all of you and all humanity to recognize the need to reorganize your lives from time to time according to the universal patterns and principles, to kneel at the feet of God, to receive the kiss of his peace, to accept the wonderful tokens of brotherhood, the magnificent symbology of the cosmic realm, and to perceive that all true religion is to call man to service, not to the moments of the years in their passing fragrances or odors, but rather to offer oneself to the diligence that comes from the farthest reaches of eternity and in the foreverness of goodness goes on to create beauty and sustaining momentums of power and reality that shall make man that divine image which God made him in in the beginning, which shall sustain the momentum of that image, which shall add to the great talents which God has given in life so that the individuals here that have one talent may find one day that they will have ten. And then the joy of entering into the Lord's concepts will become the right and beauty, the joy and tranquility of every man. For the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, which conveys all understanding, which is all understanding, will flow into the world arena, and the divine intelligences will meet the challenges of every age, not with violence and destruction, not with the outbreathing of resistance, but rather with an acceptance of the great solar realities, the acceptance of the elevating and raising power of the solar wings, whereby all civilization can be raised into the beauty of the sun shining in its strength. This is the acceptance of the fiat of the Divine Mother. This is the acceptance of the wholeness of the Universal Father. This 
is the radiant acceptance of cosmic sonship as the Holy Spirit in righteous action breathes the whirlwind of its fire out upon life to destroy the iniquities and the shames of men and by its cosmic consummation of infinite beauty to unveil the patterns of the new age as the seeds of joy and action in every soul devoted to helping me in the fulfillment of my fiat. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I would make men free, and I am the freedom of the light the liberty of God to perform those actions that will make the world truly free from disease, from pain, from fear, from tyranny, and from unnecessary bindings until the wings and beauty of the lamp of the Lord shall stand in the sky at midnight a thing of radiant beauty and joy, that all may gaze upon this lamp of God, the crystals, the light of the world, and see that whether a man worships the Christ or Buddha or Krishna or the light of God within himself, it is one light. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. There is one God within one God without, one God everywhere, let none doubt, for he is the father, mother, sustainer of beauty in action, the outbreathing of that power of the resurrection, of the ascension, of the fulfillment of the life pattern of all. I thank you, and I remain the servant who lifts the torch beside the golden door of fulfillment for the golden age incoming. I thank you.
immortal souls made in the divine image, this image echoing down the corridors of reality reveals the crystalline pattern of man whom God made. I am come then this day to reiterate to all life that the beauty and perfection of the soul is a shining gem of infinite light radiance which is passing through the world and is moving like a comet across the stellar sky. Here then the radiance of the power of creation, of faith, of reality, and know and understand that the soul of God is communicated to man by the great eternal gift of faith which he has poured forth into the world, which creates by the power of the solar magnet the magnificence of life that will itself produce the miracles of the infinite in the finite world until we have cleared the way for the soul to shine forth in all its splendor as a complete refutation of all the darkness of this present age. We shall not submit. We shall not accept the darkening ideas of mortal conceptions about individuality. God has given his gift of reality to man, and God is that reality, and ought not to be denied to any who are ready and willing to accept the faith and to understand that faith is a mountain of cosmic identity that rises from within the very consciousness of the soul until it touches the clouds of beauty that conceal the solar radiance at the summit of being and ultimately reveal from behind this concealment the splendor that breaks through the aureole of the clouds and reveals the sun of infinite purpose shining in all of its strength to humanity. The current age is dark with ideas of shadowed shapes. The current age is filled with concepts upon which we would not dwell, but we warn the students of the light everywhere and everyone to take heed and beware of yielding to the pressures of mortal thought and feeling, of yielding to the pressures of mortal ideas which seek to strip the soul of its dazzling reality and the fiats of Almighty God, which will never yield one inch of ground to the powers of darkness, but will always seek to reveal to those little children of the sun the infinite power of holy wisdom that makes everyone to know that God is all and in all, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. I am Michael from the sun. I am Michael blessing everyone. I am Michael pouring out life, light and love into the universe and determining that the psychic forces of the world shall come under divine direction. They shall be stripped of all their ornaments, of all their gildings, and of all of their trappings, and it shall come to pass that the legions of my band, the angels of faith, shall come forth into the world more and more in the coming days to blaze forth the radiance of God reality to the children of the light and to strip them of the darkness of psychic ideas, of negative ideas, and of astral thought forms and projections. We see and hear what is going on upon the planet we see and hear how humanity are being brought under frightful manifestations of the appearance world, under darkening manifestations of the dark powers, and we are determined that our legions will come forth now as never before to work and serve in the cause of freeing humanity from all of the dregs of emotional substance which they have manifested in the cup of life, which they have spread as poison abroad upon the face of the whole earth, to cover the brightening countenances of the children of the light with the opacity and density of their patterns of negativity. We say, let them not be any more. We say, never shalt thou be any more. Never shalt thou be any more. 
Never shalt thou be any more, for light shall blaze forth and replace darkness, for light shall consecrate humanity to the divine ideals, and light and light alone shall triumph, and all shall be overcome that is of the dark, for the dark is not real, and the light is real, and the light will seal you in the power and faith of that supreme moment of your victory. Even now, I point out to you, each and every one, that you yourselves, deeply within your heart, have yearned for your victory. You have yearned for the day when humanity would overcome all of their darkened ideas. You have recognized the need to keep the faith. And I say to you, each and every one, and to all humanity who can accept it, that somewhere in the priceless annals and realms of eternity, some precious moment in time and eternity, you will overcome. Will you capture that moment with me now? Will you forget those moments when you have a lack of faith, when you are plagued with doubts, when conditions seem not to merit your attention, for they seem to be moments of shadow, moments of emptiness, moments of aloneness? Will you forsake those moments now and gazing ahead to that moment of beautiful reality when the power of faith and the power of the infinite enabled you to overcome all outer conditions that may be arrayed against you? Will you stand with me now in that moment? Will you stand with me now in that supreme ideal of the moment of your own individual victory and know that the beauty and perfectionment of that moment will be ample reward for all of the conditions that may have plagued you through the centuries, conditions of overcoming, conditions of doubt, conditions of mental torpitude, when your very being seemed to be singed by the vibratory action of human condemnation and judgment, when you seemed to fall beneath the hammer of a stern reality that would not yield one instant to the ideas of mortality, and you could not quite compromise that, you could not quite understand why it was so. Let me tell you, precious ones of the light, that those who hold to the splendor of the faith are those who, even though they may seem to you as stern beings, who actually hold to your victory, they are beings that you should esteem, for the perfect love of God casts out all fear of Him. The perfect love of the masters and of the angelic hosts casts out all fear of them. And I tell you, that when you recognize what we are doing for humanity, what we seek to do for humanity, what is our desire to do for all people of the world, I tell you, your hearts will sing that wondrous eternal song of emancipation to the solar lords, and you will understand that the unity of the one God is manifest in every heart for the purposes of his beautiful freedom when he can soar out of human density into those cosmic patterns of light radiation where the beautiful manifestations of the divine art will secure for him a place in the mind of God and eternal consecration to the fulfillment of the divine ideals, worlds without end, wherever life is, wherever there is a point of light in the universe, wherever there is a manifestation of divine intelligence, there God is and God is within you and the power of his faith will give you that invincible cosmic sense of Christ's victory that overcomes the world and submits not, not even for an instant to the idea of ultimate failure, but only to ultimate victory, for victory is the forte of the God-realized man. Will you accept this now then and be free? Will you understand that for Santa Barbara we are holding a point of light over the city today? and we are intensifying rapidly an activity of cosmic light radiation against all psychic effluvia, witchcraft, shadow, and darkness. And we are extending it up the entire California coast to San Francisco and beyond, and down to Los Angeles and San Diego. We are bringing forth a thrust for a purpose against the infiltration of dope and activities of dangerous drugs to humanity. We are awakening the children and youth and I tell you, if there seems to be a surge of activity that may seem to be dangerous in the forthcoming days, let me tell you that this will be because of the tremendous foment of energy, psychic energy that is being discharged now and brought forth that it may be enclosed and dissipated by the power of the light. 
Do not be concerned then at outer conditions, regardless of what they may appear to be, but know and understand that the power of God is reaching forth to the heart of America and determined to assist this country in its role of emancipator to the world. For America was dedicated at inner levels long ago to be a great emancipator and bring the power of freedom to the world in the name of St. Germain and Jesus. And I tell you that God victory to the world will stand complete and beautiful in the cosmos and it will stand there as a refutation of all communistic, atheistic ideas that deny the power of God and seek to bring men into the realm of social bondage. I tell you, you will see an action taking place before long that will involve Senator Fulbright, and you will see that the powers of light are determined that the power of this nation shall become the power of God. You will see to it that this nation under God can triumph and carry to the whole world the blessing of cosmic law and cosmic light. If people will only give their energy to the preservation of cosmic principle, and you will see to it then that our light will extend itself to the entire family of nations for the unification of the God ideals everywhere and the bringing in of the golden age. Let not your hearts be troubled by outer conditions, but make your God-determined dedication to those appointed principles of cosmic light substance that are for the freedom of the world and for the freedom of the individual soul. I am Michael of the light. I am Michael of the sun. I am Michael, 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 whose love enfolds every one. And I tell you, I lay my sword at your feet. I lay it there that your blessed feet may touch it and know that the power of that sword of faith to penetrate invincibly into human density will give you the power to have the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace and carry the tidings of goodwill to all people for God in his beauty and strength shining forth, his splendor and his redemptive qualities has always manifested nothing but beauty, perfection, love and light to humanity and yet men have distorted it and in their greed they have sought to rend the veil and I tell you they have not sought to rend the veil between the supreme light and the supreme beauty of that light and bring it forth into humanity but they have sought to rend the veil into the darkness of the psychic and astral realms and to produce those thought forms and distensions of cosmos that are themselves no longer the outpicturing of the beauty and perfection of heaven. We would have you outpicture only beauty, only love, only the redemptive qualities that come forth from the high mountain of faith. Let that now penetrate deep into your hearts and feeling worlds. And I say, people of America and the world, receive this light and know that it is the power of election whereby a man or a woman or a child elects to embrace the principle of cosmic freedom and to be that freedom in action in the world of form. This I am, this ye are, this we will exalt. This is the divine principle of God, the principle of God freedom to the world. I thank you and I am Michael.
May the omnipresence of Christ peace radiate through your hearts as from the farthest stars, as from the garden of God's heart, a place that must be within yourselves, a place that you must make where the Lord of all can lay his head and be received. At this moment in your journeys, you are aware of the travail of the world. At this moment in your journeys, you have learned much of the face of humanity that was formerly hidden from you. You know also the extent in part of the world's peril. You are also faced with your individual problems, problems that you sometimes feel are insurmountable and difficult to comprehend, let alone cope with. But I come to you today with the fullness of that radiant faith in the eternal purpose and destiny of man, that if you will receive it, can bring about a beautiful experience in your life that will show you the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. For all things are interwoven and purposeful when viewed from the divine level, the hopes of heaven, which some men abandon recklessly and some men through a feeling of inadequacy, are ever present in you all. For in what manner do you differ from one another? Were you not all made by the same creator? And to this you can reply, yea, but did the same creator fashion your individualized idiosyncrasies? And to this I tell you nay. For each individual, out of the range of his human will, has affected his own life plan, and thus his destiny has not always contributed as it should to the entire diadem of God-magnificence, of the humanity God envisions and has envisioned from the beginning. He who has fashioned all things from the beginning then has prepared the beauty of a holy radiance to beam forth from the temple of life within you, this radiance is also the fullness of divine wisdom. It is the fount of the eternal Christ mind. It is the fount of universal destiny. It is the fullness of God magnificence framed within the setting of your lives. You are individuals, but a part of a whole, a magnificent movement that parallels the elder race, the godlike race, that actually are your elder brothers. And as there is the sweep of onward movement for yourselves, bear in mind that those far below you in the evolutionary scale are also making tiny strides where you make giant leaps. But one day, when the full beauty of Christ reality has brought them to the spot where you now stand, they too will be in a position to make those giant strides for which all who are wise may yearn and should. We urge therefore upon you not a feeling of loftiness like a mountain peak, 
but a feeling of sweet humility, like a little flower that would be willing to be trampled upon for the sake of a more massive purpose. So many, mind you, dear hearts, are continually confronted even now with their own egotistical nature. Because it has not been transmuted, it remains. And how could it be otherwise? For all things that are created by an individual and sustained by him must remain active in his world until such a time as he is willing to relinquish old habits, old ideas, banal concepts. When the freshness and beauty of the springtime of the reality of God is first with man, he is then willing to charge forth as a crusader of righteousness into the world to overcome all of the dragons of deceit and darkness, all of the wretchedness in his life that he somehow feels is his own bitterest enemy. But then, as the journey moves onward, and he becomes somewhat an old warrior in his own view, how easy it is for him to decide simply because the summer is nearly over and perhaps the fall is coming, that all of the glory and delight of the springtime is no longer with him. And therefore, truly, the last can be first, and the first can find themselves the last. Make your calling and election sure then, beloved ones, for as a world teacher, one with the Christ, your beloved Jesus, my role is to send out the radiance of God into the world of all humanity. But I know full well that unless it find lodging in an individual heart somewhere, it will profit the world nothing. For it must always be that the world is profited through the dignity of the individual. And I would therefore tonight bring to you the spiritual onus of the responsibility of Christ creation to each one of you, that the fires of that magnificent creative impulse of light and absolutism, the perfection of the absolute, should come into your consciousness with its radiance as a sparkling jewel, framing in your mind then the idea of the Christ victorious that overcomes the world. How easy it is when one is in what you have termed a state of doldrum, when one is in a human state, to forget, to even imagine what it is like to be a Christed one. How easy it is when one is inclined to be aware of a pocket of gas in the abdomen that they can then forget the spiral nebulae in the heavens which is perhaps of just about the same moment to the Father of all. You see, all things are relative, and therefore the most inane things are also effective in deterring individuals from one moment to the next, from fulfilling their destiny, their Christed reality. We come then to you tonight, here in the Vale of Kashmir, here in the great gardens and temples etherically formed, where nature has conspired to create such beauty, to remind you that your mission has not even yet begun. You have, as this messenger has told you, gone to school, and the class has been a short but rapid course in comprehension of the so-called light of Asia. And now if some of you in these surroundings strange to your outer consciousness may wonder just where the light of Asia is, let me remind you that the east is always the within. It is the point from which the sun rises. It is the point from which the Christ illumination comes and not a configuration of space at all. For space is all his. 
for space belongs unto the hallowed ones. We must maintain a very specific attitude now because I had thought as I came to you tonight to give you some specific radiance, some specific quality of understanding that must of necessity have your attention totally. For each of you are a part of this program who have accepted the gift of coming here on this pilgrimage to the land of the Far East, that your eyes may be opened not only to the outer conditions of the world and the locked-in life-or-death struggle of communism versus capitalism, of East versus West, of North versus South, of race versus race, of polar opposites, of strange singularities, to a place where your hearts can relax in a fullness of confidence that God himself can endow with a fruit of a coming age. For the present age itself is the handiwork of a past that was filled with knotty problems, many of them still remaining, tied into knots of complacency and a lack of discrimination, many of them wedded to old ideas that refuse to move. We, therefore, as we come to you tonight, are determined to generate not only in yourselves, but in all those who hear the results of the India pilgrimage, a God determination to make the world one, Christ of the East, one with Christ of the West. In this holy unity, a unity not mechanically enforced upon humanity, but a unity that is a conspiracy of the heart's delight, a unity that is the conspiracy of the heart's intent, a unity that is a conspiracy of the heart's God determination to throw off the wretchedness of the past and all that has plagued mankind if not fully, then certainly partially. A beginning then should be made. And those who cry, but we have made a beginning, let me tell you that man can only truly say that he has begun when his love is never equivocated by outer conditions. Who amongst you can say, that he is not affected by outer conditions. Let him then join with us in the molding of the world in the divine image. But let him be prepared, as prepared he must. It is with a great desire in my heart to draw you to the feet of the Lord Christ, to draw you to the feet of the Christ that you may be able to take into yourselves the necessary elements of courage to know, to dare, to do, and to be silent. For the old adage holds true today as it did in the more solemn moments when your beloved Moria and me placed in the cabinets at Adyar the various communications and documents known unto Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society of old. Now, because we have had to make changes in the entire structuring of our radiation and releases, we have moved forward once again to seek 
to draw all of the past magnificent releases, epistles of righteousness, to gather into a perfect perspective and balance that we may use them to create a body of absolute God determination, to respond to the holy wisdom of the All Father, to respond to the holy wisdom of the Lord Christ, to respond to the holy wisdom of the brotherhood and to see that the discordant elements of the world must be controlled. Where then do we begin this control? Where indeed we begin it within the life of each disciple? There are those who say, but the outer environment is such that we cannot actually work to perform the miracles of effective God control. And I say to you, can you not learn to control your environment if you desire to do so? How many adjustments have you made on this journey? How many adjustments that some of you thought you could never make? Yet you have made them. Conditions can be changed. And when they are changed for the beautiful, for the good and for the pure, Consider the effect of this upon the world at large and never let down the blessed responsibility you have undertaken. You can only control your own life. You cannot control the lives of others, but you can help others to control their lives. You can help others to understand. And by being a better example of the teachings then the world teachers have many representatives among humanity. And all of our purposes are then secured anew in the world domain. And you know, beloved ones, as we reflect back upon our own lives and realize how many times during the time of the Mughals and even before in the great battleground of past history, we ourselves exerted the strength of our individual egos because we were just a little bit piqued at some aspect of humanity. Well, blessed ones, I tell you, in each case, we pay dearly for that. And so all we are trying to do in our admonishments is spare you the same type of suffering. Oh, yes, it is true that we made the ascension eventually. But blessed ones, do you want to make it eventually or do you want to make it now? Do you want to have an eventuality that perhaps is like a mirage in the desert, always receding farther and farther away from you? Or do you actually want to have an experience whereby you can be drawing the situation closer and closer to you? How do you suppose your beloved Jesus, as well as others of us, were able to win our ascension and our attainment? Only by drawing determinedly toward God and toward Christ's mastery and toward Christ's victory. It was not done by an idea, oh yes, our perfection will come one day. But how will it come, blessed ones? This is always the question. If it does not come each day, just a little bit, how can it be there then tomorrow? Will it just suddenly appear out of nowhere as though a great magician had dropped a cloth over you and suddenly you stepped all shining and beautiful out from under the cloth? I tell you, no. It must come about a little each day and a lot in some cases each day. And whenever there is the appearance of that which is discordant or dust or decay or unkind thoughts or the response that man sometimes makes to the pressures of the world, you must be aware that this is a weed growing in the garden. And the garden of your heart, like the gardens of Shalimar, or the gardens here, must be carefully tended lest they become overgrown by care or carelessness or neglect or simply by the work of an enemy 
who sows the seeds of weeds there amongst you, right while you are moving toward a state of beauty in the becoming. Now what is peace? What is joy? What is perfection? There are those who have stood in the radiance of peace, and because their comprehensive faculties were not able to delineate between the differences of the vibratory rate, who thought when they stood in the presence of what amounted to a very gentle radiation of peace, imagined themselves to be engulfed in a torrent. There are others who have been engulfed in a torrent of peace and who have said to themselves, a breeze has stirred. Do you see then that humanity themselves, by the opening of the senses or the congealing of the senses, make a determination that actually gauges their own progress, and so differently from one person to another? Will you then see why it is so difficult to establish a set of values as far as humanity goes by which progress can be measured? But will you understand the great standard-bearer of the ages, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth? Will you understand the role of the world teacher? Will you understand the role of discipleship? Will you understand the acceptance of the mantle? Then you will understand peace as a transcendent gift, one that can day by day, unfold itself more completely and never end in the beauty of its expression. All of the terrestrial gardens end, all of the beauties of Kashmir, even the veil here, ends, and you come to a place where all that is left is a memory, but it is a delicate memory. It can be an ethereal memory. It can be a memory that pulsates beyond the realm of the visible. It can be a memory that touches the hem of the garment of our reality. And as this occurs, as the beauty of God comes down like the sun and drenches your whole consciousness, whether it is a shower of fiery intensity or it is the peace of the dew upon the grass in the morning, you will know that God's love for you is there to express itself, to accomplish its purposes in you, and to accomplish its purposes in the world simultaneously. All these things are the weaving of the eternal garment. The loom of life pulses with movement. The warp and woof of creation, the tenderness of of the mind enthralled or the mind idle, the tenderness of the mind engaged in contact with God or the mind engaged in the trivia of the world, all of these things are occurring. And so the question is, as some of you saw today in the factory where the rugs were woven, a matter of the perfected pattern being meticulously woven until a flawless creation is at last the product of the busy mind of God working through each of you. May I then say to you that with all the world peril, with all the world's trouble, with all the individual's difficulties, the perfect pattern remains vital and encouraging. It is life to the world. It is death to those who would thwart the divine plan. And this is not the will of God. It is the facts of karma and of creation. For creation is victorious. And when that which is vainglorious and deceitful and wretched manifests, the great weavers of life cannot allow it to continue. And the decrepitude of the world comes upon it, and the dust 
and the moth and destruction. As some say here in this land, Shiva, the destroyer. And so the old forms are broken. They crumble away, they molder into ruin to be replaced by the new, ever radiant and beautiful with hope, but finally appearing as the old crumbles away as a garment of perfected loveliness, a garment of supreme beauty, a garment of celestial light, a garment of cosmic hope, a garment of cosmic strength, a garment of fiery reality. All of this will make each of you a mogul of cosmic intent, a determined son and daughter of God. The brotherhood itself is only supreme in the radiant octaves of light. The brotherhood below can be no more supreme than you and others throughout the world can make it. For by your yielding to the pressures of light from above and the strength and beauty of God from above and by the outpicturing of that in the world of form, there is a little child in Czechoslovakia that is healed. There is a young student of the violin in Naples that is suddenly endowed with the power to heal through music and the celestial notes that flow forth from his bowstring are a reminder of heaven. Through you, a politician in South America is endowed with a new vision. A doctor in Vienna receives a cure for cancer. Through you, the world is changed. Through you the dream of God is born and reborn and it is as the crashing of a great ocean against a rocky wall of man's recalcitrance. Men say this has stood the test of time and they compare this to the eternal. This rocky wall built it around men's hearts and minds, the old ideas that have wrought such pain. All of this we would replace. All of this the brotherhood would replace. We would not destroy just to destroy. We would only break the form when time and necessity demands it. We would only break the form when there is no other way. We would rather transmute than to smash. We would rather transmute and change from within when change is wrought from without and all is smashed, often destruction means the destruction of much energy. When we work from within, it is as a seed reaching out tendrils and growing through the life of the individual, even in its state of imperfection, and gradually working and working and working the beauty of God out into the world order. You are all connected to the true vine. You are all apart. The branches of God ye are. Your hands are like waving palms. Your hearts are like grails. Your eyes become visionary eyes looking to a future where God appears more radiant still in splendor beaming from afar. Your eyes do gaze upon his star, his hope. You wonder where you are and there you see that he appears a free being right within you. Chrysalis inward growth and beauty like the glow of angel fires. 
putting out the sordid glow of man's desires and kindling then within the mind and being light celestial penciled sunbeams painting on the world to be an image fair of immortality. Will you then, gazing upon the present world order and seeing that the hand of time like a giant car of juggernaut will roll all this into the past, realize with me that you must win at last for all that crown. And as you win it for your soul, you win it for mankind, for God and all are one. The brotherhood in times past has so often beckoned thus. We have spoken in so many ways in the forces of Prakriti, in the forces of Fohat, in the forces of divine linkage. Between hearts we have sought to weave flower garlands of hope and friendship. But the world in selfishness has marred the plan. But now, in these latter hours, when all the world is like a tinderbox, waiting to create new unrest and violence, we ask the children of destiny's light to keep their hearts pliable to him, to determine that nothing shall mar that plan in you, for then you can be the hope of the world, even as Christ is the hope of the world. For not one, but many sons has he brought into captivity. Lord El Moria stands to my right. Lord Christ to my left. Your beloved Mother Mary to the rear. Archangel Michael and the Goddess of Purity are above in the atmosphere and around us stand legions of radiant fiery beings. And what care I if men may laugh what care I if men may doubt? What should you care if this they would flout? For we see and we are and we have being and we have seen his star and we are freeing all who are of the opinion that God can do it still. For from the beginning, he has been the arbiter of the destiny of man. It has been his grace that worked of old in Enoch, that worked of old in Elijah, that magnificent power that spoke to the young child Samuel. Always, it has been God, the fairest of the fair, the goodness of all who breathe a prayer to call out the best destiny of man, the manifestation of God goodness everywhere. Hence the brotherhood continues to smile upon the world and it is as a pearl of great price, a radiant, shining, luminous orb of pure crystalline light coalesced around the center of God idea. And in this pearl, iridescent with the rainbow glow of cosmic fires, the shining future in a cosmic crystal ball revealed by the prophet from on high the Lord Christ, the only begotten of the Father. 
shines luminous in the heart of men who will receive it. And to all others, it seems but a myth. And they will be deceived by themselves until at last they shed the skin of deceit and achieve a rapport with that reality which I am, that reality which ye are, that reality which ye sought when ye came. For you came seeking light, Pilgrims upon the path of destiny, and the world needs this light tonight as they have never needed anything before. We care not then what human consciousness may say, for our words today and always are for the exaltation of the living soul. Be at peace then in the gardens here at Kashmir, Carry in your hearts the treasure of your pilgrimage to this land and be aware that the peril that threatens all lands must be counteracted by God-determination, by unity with the brotherhood and one another, and by a reality that sunders every contact with unreality in yourselves or in others. For light has no fellowship with darkness, for light is the celestial brotherhood. Light is in you, you came forth from light, and to light you return. As the world teacher, as one with the Christ, we both express then to humanity this teaching of the pearl of great price that is within you. And when all religions and all peoples and all lands, all tongues shall become one in the soundless sound of his reality, then the kingdom of heaven will be with men. Lose not this vision. Let no outer stream of battle cloud your mind or obscure the image, for you came to find it and I give it to you tonight. I thank you. To our beloved God, presence, and holy Christ, praying. <coughs> to the light of God in India, the light of God in America, the light of God in the world order, we say gratitude to you always. Gratitude for the pilgrimage, gratitude for our ongoing, and O Lord Christ, take us safely home to our loved ones and through the rest of this journey as you have already. We commend ourselves into thy care and love. The sign of the heart, the head and the hand to you, may the peace of your presence abide with you wherever you are, wherever you go. May the glorious peace of your presence flow through days of service and nights of rest. May the peace of your presence keep you blessed. The sign of the heart, the head and the hand to you. The brotherhood eternal salutes you in the name of the Christ and Lord Gautama. And may you ever be blessed. May the dove of the Holy Spirit, the eternal comforter, rest upon your brow this night and upon your hearts. And may your hearts be a chalice of fire and love that shall never go out, that that flame will blaze throughout the ages and into the immortal destiny of all mankind. God bless you.